it might be wine. Hey you guys, welcome back. So for the past few days on my Instagram, I have had up a little question box where people could ask me any questions they had about me, about plants, about anything. And you guys definitely had a ton of questions. Thank you to the person who pointed out to me that I have never even said my name on this channel. Thanks. I'm new to YouTube, <laughs> we're going to learn together. I'm gonna to focus today on more of the personal get to know me questions because there's certainly not a lot about me on this channel, so I figured that this would be a good opportunity. So, hey you guys, nice to meet you. My name is Alina. I do have my computer here to help me with all of these questions. So we will dive right into it. Now, question number one that I got is, are you an interior designer? Now, my channel name is Planterior Decorator. One night earlier this year, I was on the wine and I was watching K-dramas and the word planterior came up and it is a borrowed English Korean word, which just basically means plants as interior decor. And of course, I looked around my apartment and I'm thinking, that word describes me and this place pretty good. So I took interior decorator and pivoted to planterior decorator. It was available on Instagram. So I started it so I could start posting some of my plant pics there. So that is how planterior decorator came around. So I am not an interior designer. However, my mother is an interior designer and I am in a similar field. So we'll pivot that into one of the next most asked questions, which is what job do you do? Now I went to school for landscape architectural technology. So landscape design, pretty similar, just with trees, shrubs, perennials, that kind of thing, outdoors. I graduated in 2014 and I have been working in the field ever since. And definitely one of the most asked questions was how did you get so into plants? And that's kind of related to my job. So in 2011, I took a year off of post-secondary and worked at a greenhouse. And I worked at that greenhouse for a number of years and I loved it. There is something so nice about working in like a nice humid environment surrounded by green. It's why that's how I wanted to live. That greenhouse that I worked at also had a landscape design firm attached to it, which is how I figured out that that was a job. And that is the reason why I went into the field of landscape architecture. And now here we are, my day job and my night pastime is all about plants and I would not have it any other way. Then that kind of pivots into how do you know so much about plants? Being a passionate plant parent, I do a lot of research. So between my own education, uh, my past work experience, and then just searching through things, connecting with people who know more than I do, I've definitely absorbed a lot. Experience has to be one of the best ways to learn things, especially when you're dealing with plants where it's so kind of like feel it out. So over the years of owning so many plants, I definitely trust my knowledge on them at this point. There's still tons that I don't know but I feel like I have a pretty good grasp. I keep around 250 of them alive. So far, so good. Now, another question that I got asked a bunch was about Sven. Uh, what breed is Sven <laughs> is a question that gets asked a lot. And he is a Pomeranian. <laughs> he is a Canadian farm Pomeranian. So he is not really a fancy boy. He is five and a half years old and we've had him since he was just a little puppy. I'll post a picture over here because he didn't even look like a dog. And for anyone wondering, Sven does not mess around with the plants. He does like to be around the plants. He lays under them, goes and sniffs them all the time, but he's never tried to nibble or ruin a plant. He just loves them too much, like his mom. Now the next question, I probably had like 15 people ask, and thank you guys so much for that, <laughs> but it's about my skincare routine. Now, being not young anymore, I certainly have a passion for skincare. If I have good skin, it is not because of genetics. It is certainly because I've worked really, really, really hard at it. <laughs> I know this isn't something that everyone is interested in. So if you wanna know 
all about it, definitely leave me a comment down below and I can do a full skincare regime video. But just a few quick tips for skin. Make sure that you are using a good SPF. Make sure that you're using a lot of moisture and make sure that you have a good retinoid of some form in your skincare routine. I basically treat my face like I must be 85 years old and so far so good, it's working, it's helped a lot. It's actually one of the reasons why I love South Korea so much. They have phenomenal skincare. They are way ahead of us. So that takes us right into the next question, which is why the heck were you in South Korea for a month? So I mentioned in my last video that I travel, um, I don't actually travel that much. I just travel to South Korea, if I'm being frank. So how this whole South Korea thing came about is that my best friend of 20 years and I went to visit South Korea a number of years ago, South Korea and Japan. And there was something about South Korea that just felt like our home. And she totally found her calling there. She's been living there now for a couple of years and she's doing university there. So I go there to be with her. It's like our one chance to get to hang out and see each other. So three, four weeks is usually ideal to get out there and go just be back with my best friend again. So no, I didn't teach English while I was out there. I just go for travel. Now that I also own a plant business here in town, I do have some contacts out there that I plan to meet with regarding plant sales. But up until now, it's always just been a pleasure trip and like really truthfully, always such a fun time. And the other question was, do I speak Korean? I can read Hangul and while I want to say that I can speak some Korean, my Korean friends would make fun of me so hard for saying that. It's more like I have the language skills to survive than have the language skills to communicate. My friend who lives there speaks essentially fluently. Again, she does university there in Korean. So she hauls me through our trips and takes care of everything for me. I miss you, Rachel. I'll see you after COVID. And here's another fun question. Why aren't you married yet? What's wrong with you? So. Thank you, Brad, for that. I was actually supposed to get married in May down in Hawaii, but of course, thanks to COVID, that didn't happen. So it's been rescheduled twice already. We've just been together for so long at this point that there was really no rush and we have this venue booked and I'm really, really excited about it. So I didn't want to just rush into it and do it here. If I had to wait 10 years to get married at all, I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. So I'm being stubborn. I've got my heels dug in on this and I will be getting married in Hawaii in 2021. Another question that I got asked was if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you want to live? And well, of course I'd love to say South Korea because then I could go live with my BFF. Um, I would have to say realistically, given I'm from Canada, I feel like we've got just the right amount of socialism going on. I like my free healthcare. So if I'm being a realistic person, I'm going to say the West Coast. So my fiance and I totally love Vancouver Island. And if we could live somewhere out there right on the ocean in a little secluded place, we would do that. We actually just bought a house that we move into in February. So no plans to move anytime soon. Another question that I got asked was how do you afford so many plants? <laughs> and fair, how do I afford so many plants? I guess. <laughs> I guess everyone has their hobbies and this one is mine. But for any new plant parents out there, don't get down on yourself about not being able to afford plants. One of the best ways that you can afford plants is by doing trades because plants grow. So I would recommend going on Facebook, finding some local plant communities and just looking for people to trade with. Uh, it works well for common plants, for rare plants, for all plants. They're always growing all the time. So you can take a cutting and share with someone, they can take a cutting, share with you. Best way to expand your plant collection and not have it be too expensive. I personally do a lot of trading with locals here. I've definitely made a lot of friends. Uh, that was another question I had is how do you meet people in the plant community? Definitely through Instagram and Facebook. I love connecting with you guys through Instagram. Whenever someone reaches out to me with a DM, I am definitely more than happy to chat with you guys about plants. And for anyone looking to grow their plant friend base, I 1000% recommend checking Facebook for any local plant groups. Like I live in Edmonton, Edmonton Plant Club, there's like 10,000 members 
and I've met so many awesome people through there. So while I'm not the hugest Facebook fan, it is good for one thing, and that is plant people. And another fun question that I got asked was plant-related regret stories. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't regret many plants that I own. Looking around, there's really not too many plants that I'm like, ooh, I don't like that one. However, my regret stories would probably be plants that I cannot keep alive. I cannot keep alive a fern. Those big bushy Boston ferns, the damn things tempt the hell out of me and I cannot do it. I've killed like three of them. I also cannot keep wandering dudes alive. I can't do it. I've been told by so many people that they're so easy and I don't kill them, but I keep them clinging to life in a really pathetic way. They don't look good under my care. And then of course, I also got the what are your top five favorite plants question. Honestly, I do not have five favorite plants. I love all of these plants so much that it is impossible to pick a favorite. But a few that I would recommend to anybody would be a bird of paradise, if you have a sunny window, a pothos, especially a marble queen is my favorite. They grow so fast and they fill out so well that they just look beautiful in any home. I love snake plants. Any of the taller, fuller varieties, I just love them. They're so easy to take care of and they look so good in so many spaces. I think that Chinese evergreen are amazing. I recommend those to new plant owners because they grow so big, they don't need a lot, and they are stunning. And then probably another one of my favorites are just standard cacti. I love my little cacti collection. They're beautiful. They're also really easy and they're just such little standalone statement pieces. So they're definitely one that I recommend to people. And I think that I'll end this video here. I have, again, tons of plant questions, but some of these I can definitely make into full videos. Like I got asked about my 2021 plant wish list. I could make that. Uh, what to do when you bring home new plants. I got asked about soils and uh, different amendments. Those are all definitely things that we could really dive into. And I'm more than happy to turn those into videos. So definitely head on over to Instagram and follow me at Planterior Decorator. I think this will be the first Q&A of many. This was a great way to get some engagement going and make sure that I'm answering your questions. And if you'd like to, feel free to subscribe to this channel. It's free and it definitely really helps out. So thank you all so much for your questions and thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye, you guys.